Hello, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk. In this video, we are going to be painting a Griff Charger. One of these guys right here. And um, these are from the Stormcast Eternal um, Vanguard Palador sets. And the color scheme we are going to go for today is very similar to um, this one here. So this is the um, Lord Aquila that um, I painted up. I've posted a picture up various places online. And a few people have asked me how to sort of get the colour scheme for the bird itself. So I'm going to share um, that with you guys in this video. So um, not, um, originally I was going to just buy this model again and paint another one, but I thought I actually quite like the scheme, so I'm going to do it on one of my Griff Chargers. Um, this scheme is very similar to um, the Lord Aquila colour scheme that MGW have done. Um, it's not the same though, I haven't been able to replicate it 100%, but um, hopefully um, it still looks good enough to you, to you guys at home. So, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is actually paint the lower legs right here, because these are going to be in a lighter colour. Um, you may also want to paint a little bit of the underbelly like this as well, um, which I think is what I did on the Lord of Quir. To um, start with, we're going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh. So it's also worth um, pointing out that this guy has been undercoated in a light grey primer. If yours is undercoated in black, then you may just need one or two extra coats of this colour. But as I'm going over light grey, and the powdered which flesh covers it really well, and we're just going up to the knee. So just painting it all over this area. Don't matter um, about getting it on anywhere else at the moment because obviously we'll be painting over everything else. Um, I'm only applying this to the back legs as well. So just the back legs and the underbelly. Okay, so next we're going to base coat the other areas. And for that we're going to take some Warp Fiend Grey and some Doomble Brown. So I've mixed them in um, roughly three parts grey to one part brown, and that's what I'll show you the colour on the palette there. Now this is a slightly different mix to what I used on the Lord Aquila, because with that I used one of the um, Citadel tints, the um, brown one, but I thought um, as not not everyone has them and you can't buy them separately, I thought I'd just stick to using a red, regular ready brown. Um, in this tutorial. So um, we're not going to cover the tail with it, of course you can if you wish, but um, pretty much the rest of this model, apart from his lower front claws, is, um, they're all going to be painted um, in this colour. So. Um, also, it's um, worth pointing out that um, these front feathers are also going to end up being white, so um, I could have applied the Parrot Witch Flesh on them originally, but that's um, not too much of a big issue at the moment. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this mix that we've just used and we're going to add some Flow Aid to it. This is to essentially turn that colour into a wash. Now if you don't have Flow Aid, you can just use water for this step. It's not um, it's not massively important to use Flow Aid. I just like to use it because it um, helps it flow into the recesses just a little bit better. And we're just going to apply it to these white areas here. Now don't worry about it tinting the overall surface because we're going to come back and highlight it. We just want this colour just to sit in all the recesses like so. So next up we're going to take some dried bark and we're going to add it to that um, wash that we've just used. And this is just to darken up that wash because we're now going to apply it to the, the other areas. And add in a little bit of water with the flow aid, just to water it back down again. 
So that's to highlight all these areas here, and as you can see it just flows nicely in the recesses and just adds a little bit of depth to these areas. Now if you really want darker shadows you could add some black instead, but I just come with a dried bark just to give us some nice soft brown or brownish um, shade. So now, before we um, go any further, I'm going to let both of these shades dry, and then we can um, look into base coat and a couple of other areas, and then we'll begin all our highlights. Okay, so um, the shade is still a little bit wet, but that's um, no problem because um, the areas we're going to do next don't involve these areas. Um, I'm going to take some corn red. And we're going to paint these feathers at the front, and also the tail. So, a bit different to how I'd usually paint um, some of the miniatures on film. I'm actually just going to be doing all the base coats and shades first, and do all the highlights um, afterwards. So, just base coat all these. Feathers like so, and the ones at the front, as I said earlier, they're going to be white, so we'll um, worry about them later on. And also, just going to paint the tail in this colour, also. Okay, so I also um, painted the claws as well in the red, and um, you may choose to do that after the next step because we are now going to take some Eschen Grey. This is for the lower parts of the front legs, including these um, sort of um, scales or armor plates there, and um, the horns, the beak, and the fur at the back, the hooves, and the plumage on the tail as well. So all these areas are just going to be base coated in Ashen Grey. So I'll start with the tail. And of course, um, if, if you've used a darker undercoat, you may need a couple of thin coats for this, but um, over the light grey, it just covers quite nicely. Um, obviously, make sure the wash is dry at this stage if it's in all these bits here. So mine's just a little, still a little bit wet, so I will... Um, and the flow aid does take ages to dry, <laughs> um, longer than a conventional wash, unfortunately, so... I will have to leave mine to dry just a little bit before I come back in. So I'm um, just working away uh, around the miniature, painting all these areas, and then we can start to shade them. So now that the corn red and eschen grey areas have been painted, we can give them both a shade with some null oil. And we're literally, literally just applying it straight out of the pot in all these areas, just to bring out all the detail on them. So just work your way around all of these areas, and then we can start to highlight them. I'm also going to apply it all over the tail as well. Okay, so the red and the grey areas have now um, had their wash and that is now nicely dried. Um, I'm going to dry brush both these areas. So we're going to start with the grey. Um, if you're using the same dry brush, it's always best to do like a lighter neutral colour first um, instead of like um, doing like a red or an orange. Just so um, if you don't um, if you don't thoroughly wash your brush out afterwards, then you can get some of that orange mixing in with a lighter colour. So um, I recommend starting with the long beard grey. So this is for all the areas that are um, the start grey. So, get my dry brush ready. And then we can just start lightly dry brushing all these areas. And as you see, that will really pick out this detail really nicely. See there already, it's looking really nice on his foot. Um, I'll do the tail next. Again, just 
really dry brush in. It's always best to do your dry brushes quite lightly because it's much easier to build it up than it is to take it away if you do too much. So just build that up. Back of the legs as well. So all these areas like so. And when it comes to like hooves and stuff, you can just catch the ends. Just catch these little raised bits there, look. So, so I'm gonna work around him and then we'll come back and finish the feathers. Okay, and as you can see, these um, grey areas have now had their dry brush. And that's um, just where we're going to leave them. I think um, they look quite nice, especially on the front legs there. And next we're just going to simply just dry brush the feathers in the same way. And I'm going to take some Troll Slayer Orange to do this. So I'll just load up on my brush. As always with dry brushing, um, let's, you just load some up onto your dry brush and then just get rid of the recesses on a paper towel or in my case I just use like an old um, cloth and we just can begin a lightly dry brushing now with the feathers you could have started with a light red and then gradually build up to the orange but just for purposes of simplicity I'm just going to go straight to um, the orange on these, I do have several of these guys paint up so I'm just going to make it as quick and easy for myself as I can and also with claws just going to have the same treatment and that's again why I'm dry brushing as well so um, normally in some of these areas I would um, just edge highlight especially claws and stuff but we're just going to dry brush just so we can paint these up slightly quicker okay so next we can move move on and um, going back to the original skin areas we started with, and we're going to start with the lower areas first. So we're going to build up some highlights to them. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to come straight in with um, some Slanish Grey. Now I thinned this out a little bit more than I usual, usually would. Try not to be sort of semi-transparent, and we're just going to go over all the raised areas for these. So I know they look sort of um, sort of light, really brown at the moment, but these areas we're going to lighten up so they're almost like a really pale light purple with this sort of ready brown colour in the recesses. It's quite sort of unusual but I think it works quite well with this scheme. <coughs> Excuse me. And then once the um once we do the highlights in the next step it will all come together and look um quite nice. So next we're going to highlight these areas and we're going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh. So this is a little bit of a jump from the previous colour, so you could do a stage in between where you mix the two. However, I'm going to thin this colour down again, just like the previous step, so um, it won't dry as bright on the actual miniature. I'm actually going to thin it down just a little bit more. And essentially, um, just gonna do sort of stylized highlighting where we just um, get all these raised areas. So it's not so much um, a realistic sort of zenithal style, but I quite like sort of highlighting this way um, on sort of creatures and stuff. It's not to everyone's taste, but if you're just trying to get them out unpainted quite quickly and simply, yeah, that's that still works, so. so I'm just sort of really following the lines of the muscles and the knees. Now I'll just make this whole area look a little bit brighter as well. And as I've said, as the paint's quite thin, it won't dry as bright as this. So essentially, um, you see where it's dry up here, like it's not as bad, I will just find a little highlight around there as well. And that is essentially um, just the lower parts of the leg, so we can now begin to highlight these upper portions. Okay, so now we can highlight um, the reddish areas, and again we'll come in for Doom Ball Brown, and then we'll add some Slanish Grey to that. 
re-establish this colour on top and this time it'll be slightly lighter. Um, I thinned it out, as you can see it's thinned out quite a bit and you probably don't need to thin it out this much actually. Um, that's fine. Yeah, I'm just going around all these areas but just um, leaving the darker colour in all the recesses. And as it's quite thin, um, I'll do a couple of coats of this. Okay, now we can highlight this in exactly the same way as the lower rear legs. This time, I've just added some more slanish grey to the previous mix, and that'll give us this sort of lighter colour, as you can see here. Now, I've thinned out quite a bit, so um, I'm sorry if it's a little bit too hard to see on camera. Now I'm applying these quite thickly as I do plan to go in with a further highlight just to go a little bit further with this colour. So you can see um, it's, it's a bit more subtle than the highlight we had last time just give us a bit more of a blend. And um, I'm essentially just working around the previous areas, just not a bit more focused than before. So, sort of quite. Still using a bit sort of a large brush just for thick and um, thick brush strokes. Now, because that was quite thin, that'll dry quite subtle. But that's sort of the effect we want for this. And just go around the face as well. Okay, so now we add even more slanish um, grey into this mix, and we can begin to highlight just around all the muscle areas. So I've still got my large brush here, but you could use a smaller one. I'm just going to focus it around there like that. Again, it's quite thin. Because these highlights will be a bit softer than the previous ones on the lower leg. See, sorry, it's hard to keep it in shot um, at the moment, but just sort of working around. So again, it's just a sort of stylized type highlighting. Um, it's a personal um, taste. You could go zenital if you want, or just build up lots of soft layers, get a more natural look, but. I thought I'd go something different with these, and I quite like this sort of look. Um, it all works quite well with sort of um, more sort of dull, pastel y colours, I find. Um, if you're going too bright, sometimes it might look a bit stark, but. I think it looks okay on these. Now I'm just trying to recreate what I did on the um, Lord Aquila, so that's what I did on him. So that's what I shall do on these guys. Again, we're just sort of back around his muscles. If you really want to take this even further, you could add a further highlight, add more slanish grey to the mix, but I think this is just enough for this. Okay, and um, with that, this um, reddish colour is now complete. Now you can see the highlights on there. I did actually apply just another layer of these highlights. Hopefully you can see them right on the camera. Of course you could go even further and add some powder which flesh to them if you really want a sharper highlight. Um, so now there's not much left on the actual Griff Charger himself. We're just going to paint these feathers at the front and then we'll do his tongue and his eyes. And for the feathers, I'm going to start with some Fen Rizian Grey. So these are going to be um, sort of like a bluey white colour with a thin resin grey and um, applied as a base and then we'll go over with some white. So I'm just hitting the areas where all these feathers are. Of course you could do these feathers any colour you wish. You could even do them red to match the other ones. But I'm sort of going with the theme I used 
on the Lord Aquila, so the feathers on there for this colour also. And then with these ones, I'm um, just on the neck. You haven't really got to do anything with them, we'll just highlight them in the next step. So now we can um, just dry brush these feathers. You can, of course, um, just pick them out individually um, with white scar if you want. But I'm just going to take some of the um, Praxetti white um, dry compound. And we're just going to dry brush this on the feathers. Of course, um, it's worth using a small dry brush for this. Just so you don't get it on um, some of the other areas. But we're just literally just going to dry brush these feathers. And if any are too hard to get to, then you can just pick them out with white scar. And I'll do that on these smaller ones just on the neck. But then once that's done, we just got to do the tongue and the eyes and then our griff charger. Minus, of course, um, the other parts that you can just paint up to match your army. Um, he'll be complete. So when I come back, we'll do the eyes and the tongue. Okay, so with the feathers now done, we can move on to the tongue, and I'm going to take some Zerus purple. Of course, you can paint the tongue any colour you wish, but I'm going to have purple on mine. Just add another colour to the miniature. That's just a case of thinning it out slightly and just applying it on the tongue, like so. I'll do the other side as well, of course. And keep them in shot. And next, we can add a little highlight to the tongue, and we'll take some of our jean stealer purple, and I'm just going to thin it out just slightly on our palette as always. Just a little bit more. And to, to highlight the tongue, I'm literally just going to run a line of this colour if I can get it in the shot. It's always so much harder to do on camera, but I'm trying to run a line of this colour. Just along the tongue like that. And I'll do this on either side. And now lastly, we can paint his eyes. And we're going to take some Uriel Yellow. I quite like this yellow. So, be perfect for his eyes. And they have quite large eyeballs, so we're just going to get it in shot. <laughs> we can just apply this on to the eye. Now, I've watered it down slightly, as always. That'll just help it flow nicely onto the eye. And I'll fill in the rest of this off camera, just as it's a bit awkward to get the angles when I'm filming. Okay, and lastly, we're just going to paint the eyeball on the eye. I'm going to use some uh, Abaddon Black. So I've thinned it out, and you really do need it thin for this. And we're literally just going to paint a line on the eye, so it's more like I'm sort of like lizards, sort of eye. I'll try and bring it in closer. You see, we've got a nice little dot in the middle, actually, that's quite nice, just as it is. So I may actually just very carefully, if it's going to come off my brush, just add a little bit more to that. I'm quite happy with that, actually. So I'll just do the other side, and then our Griff Charger is complete. And here we have the completed Griff Charger. Now, of course, um, I haven't painted all the straps and saddle, etc. Um, these will be painted up to match my army. So, of course, you might you might paint them differently to match your colour scheme. But I just wanted to show off how to paint the actual Griff Charger. So, that's what I've done here. And I hope you guys um, quite like how he's come out. Um, I'm quite happy um, with this colour scheme. Now, of course, it matches the Lord Aquila colour scheme that... Um, I showed you at the beginning of the video, and a lot of people have asked me how to achieve the colours, especially the sort of red, ready brown. So um, that's what why I've created this video, and I'm really happy with how he's come out. Actually, he's not identical to the um, Lord Aquila, but 
because I'm only mixing paints, it's always hard to get um, identical mixes sometimes, especially with um, GW paints. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with how it comes out. Um, and as I say, I hope you guys um, quite like this, and I hope this has been useful for some of you. And of course, um, if, if you have enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. And you can also subscribe to our channel um, if you haven't done so already. Um, keep up to date with all the latest um, bat reps and painting tutorials. And um, we, We've always got plenty planned for the future. Um, I've got loads of ideas for future painting tutorials, which hopefully I can get around to do. Um, I have another one, um, actually, that I've already filmed to go up next week as well, so I um, look forward to that. Um, you can also um, sign up for our Patreon. Um, I'm, I'm now um, lowering the pledge amount for um, free shipping. So if you want free shipping on all your Bitsbox orders, um, you can now get that for just a $5 pledge. Um, that's for a limited time. So um, if, if you're up for that, um, if you're someone who orders a lot of bits from our site, um, you could save yourself some money by signing up to that. Um, so yeah, um, all that's left to say, as always, is thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again in the next video.